Today, a brief look at the Nikon ES2 digitizing adapter. We purchased one to preserve our old slides and negatives, and just in case we start shooting some of the film we have laying around. One of our goals this year is to do some home developing of film, so we would develop the analog film, but then shift to a digital process for viewing and printing using the ES2 to go from film to digital. Let's first talk about what the ES2 is and what it isn't. It's a set of tubes, a step-down ring, and some other materials designed to get your slides and negatives right in front of a macro lens and then also backlit. Uh, the set is geared towards Nikon's 60mm f2.8 micro lens for FX and their 40mm micro lens for DX. We went ahead and purchased the 60mm micro to use with our Z6 and Z7 using the F-mount adapter. You may have heard that the ES2 works very well with the Nikon D850. And while the D850 has a feature that will automatically invert the colors for negatives, I do want to note that there's no actual electronic connectivity between the ES2 and your camera. So as long as you're comfortable inverting colors and then color correcting in Photoshop or other software, you really don't need a D850 at all. As long as you have an F-mount, <laughs> one of the two lenses I mentioned, the ES2, some slides or negatives, and a light source, you're in business. The name of the game with the ES2 is convenience. You have a very handy slide and negative holders that interface directly with the lens attachment. You drop your slides or negatives into the appropriate holder, and then you slide the holder across the lens attachment. It locks into place with each frame so you can quickly work through the material. I found I was able to autofocus with the 60mm and the ES2, but you can certainly manually focus if you prefer, and then you snap the photo. Now, Nikon recommends using a flat picture control to keep colors true to the original film's colors. I used Vivid with some old Ektachrome slides and everything looked great. So far, I've been using the Z6 and shooting in RAW to get the most flexibility when processing. Here I'm importing one of my slide images into Photoshop. Uh, it's super simple with slides because the colors don't need to be inverted. Um, I do some quick cropping, I spot out some dust and some blotches on these old slides. And when I'm sitting down in earnest to go through all of these old Grand Canyon slides, I'll probably do a bit more color correction and maybe even set up an action to help automate the process. Now this old racing photo, this is on print film. So it's a negative shot on 800 speed film. Uh, I first moved the color temperature slider all the way to the left to get rid of the orange cast from the negative. Then once the raw image is imported, I invert the colors. Now we're getting somewhere. Then just to see how quick I could get it adjusted, I went for auto contrast and then auto color. Honestly, not half bad for the minimal time I've spent so far doing this. Now zooming in, you can see color grain in this photo. That's not from the Z6, that's from this old ASA 800 print film that I used for this shot. Now I prefer to leave it as it is, but since you're in Photoshop or Lightroom or whatever you're using, you can certainly use some of the noise reduction filters to give the image a cleaner, more digital look if you'd prefer. Of course, with slower print film uh, than this and most slide film, there certainly will be less grain than what I have here. The simplicity of the ES2 is its elegance. It's the right tools matched to a few different Nikon lenses to get you clean, crisp, analog to digital conversions in a very smooth workflow. It's not something that I'll use every day, but with plenty of old slides and negatives laying around and maybe some new ones coming with that home developing project, it's definitely something that I'm glad we picked up.